site builders seem to enjoy using the term button and link interchangeably, when in reality, the functionality of a button and the functionality of a link are completely different in the web space. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the differences between links and buttons and how they function on a website, as well as show you how you can create links that may look and feel like buttons, but behave as typical links. Let's dive into the builder. Let's start off by dragging both a link and a button onto our interface. So our link there, let's grab a button. You can see by default, links will have a blue text with an underline, as the buttons by default will be styled inside of a box. The functionality of the two is significantly different. On the link side, links are designed to simply link out or navigate to other pages on your website or other websites altogether. Buttons, on the other hand, are designed to trigger some kind of action. Now that could be seen as triggering a script or some custom JavaScript. It could also be seen as triggering a form submission on one of your forms or other types of actions. We now understand the fundamental difference between what is a link and its purpose and what is a button and its purpose. But why do many builders call simple links buttons? Well, it's probably because in most cases when you create landing pages or sites, any call to action link usually looks like a button. You'll see it formatted just like buttons with square or rounded corners, and it will look like a button that can be clicked on a website. So how do we actually style a link to make it look like a button? Let's have a look in the builder. All right, so jumping back in, I'm first going to remove our button because we just want to be styling links today. Now you see buttons typically have some padding on the top and bottom, as well as left and right, background color, and then a little hover. Effect. So let's apply each of those. I'm gonna start off by setting some padding. So I'm just gonna hold Alt on my keyboard to select top and bottom at the same time. We'll give them eight pixels of padding. And then same for the left and right, I'll hold Alt and I'll give them 20. I'm then going to adjust my text. First, I'm going to remove the underline and I'm going to change the color from blue to white. So it'll make more sense in a second. Then I'm going to change my background color from its default nothing to, to a strong color. Let's say we go with bright red. From there, I also want to set a transition. So I'm gonna add a transition. I'm going to set the property to just be all. So it's going to apply it to all properties that I change on hover and I'll leave the rest as is. I'm then going to select my local style source, change its state to hover. Now that it's on hover, I'm going to change the background. Let's make it a little bit of a darker red and I'll leave the text as is. If we then change our local source back to its default and preview, you'll see the button changes its style when we hover over it. We now have a visually looking button that's in fact just a link. Lastly, I want to actually add a URL to this link or point it somewhere, right? So I'm going to go into the settings. From here, I can define the href. Now the href might be your own website or other sites if you just have a URL. If you want it to be on your Web Studio project, you can select a page and then potentially a section on each of the pages. If you want it to trigger an email, phone call, or attachment, you can also do so by selecting the source Finally, you can set the target options. So do you want this to open in the same tab or a new tab? And the prefetch options, which is should the browser fetch the data from that page before a user clicks on it, as they're about to click on it, or as the button link enters the screen. And those are the main differences between creating a button versus creating a link and how you can create a link that looks like a button on your own Web Studio project. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video down below in the comments. I'd like to also invite you to come and try out Web Studio, whether you're looking to create a personal website for yourself or building websites for others. Web Studio allows you to create an unlimited amount of websites and map up to five domains on the free tier to help get you started in your web design journey. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.